Hey everyone, let's take a look at the differences between using Axios to fetch our data from an API and using the Fetch API to fetch our data. So I've already got an application up and running with two pages. One is using Axios to fetch the data, all these beautiful mountains from an API. And the other is using the Fetch API to fetch exactly the same mountains. So pretty much the same, pretty simple. Let's have a look at the code to see the differences. So I've got the two side by side, but let's focus on the Axios one for the moment. Now you'll see in the script tag, I've got import Axios from Axios. So I've already done an npm install Axios or a yarn app Axios. So it's now my package JSON, which means I can now import it and use it in my code. So I'm using async data, as you can see, async data. And then I've just created this const API equals the API call. So I can pass it in here. I could have just put the API call direct in there, but just to keep the code cleaner, I've put it um, separate for now. So I've got const mountains equals await axios.get, get my API, and then response and return the response.json. And then I can return my mountains and then in my template v4 mountain and mountains and print out all my mountains. So let's have a look at fetch. So with fetch, I've got async data the same, but you will notice that I've got no import. So at fetch, we don't need to import anything. It just works. So there's no need to install or import anything to use fetch. I've got my API call the same, const mountains equals await fetch API the same. So the difference here is I'm using fetch instead of axios.get, uh, then response and return the response.json. So this is just a little different. Um, in axios, I'm returning the data and in fetch, I need to, do, to return the JSON, so response.json, and then I can return my mountains and use them. So not too many differences here. Now let's have a look when it comes to errors. So imagine I put Debbie at the end of this API call, which is gonna give me an error because I don't exist in the mountains API. And if I click on my page and go to Axios, for example, I get this next error page that says request failed with a status code 404, go back to the home page. Okay, that's perfect, great. So I go back to the home page and I'm gonna check fetch and that should give me exactly the same. But hang on a second, what is going on here? So let's inspect this, right? I have got a um, can be found in, this is some static text. And you'll notice before maybe that it was like the mountain can be found in the continent. So I'm missing the mountain name, can be found in a static and I'm missing the, um, the continent name. Got a placeholder for the image there. So it's kind of basically giving me the page um, and it's trying to like print out the mountain, but there's no mountains. So it's just printing out whatever is static. And that's kind of not very good because your user is looking at that thinking, what's going on here? Okay, so what is going on here? Let's have a look at the network tab and see the differences. So if I go back to Axios and I click here, I have got a 404, a status code of 404. Okay, perfect. Now if I go to fetch, I have got a status code of 404. So I've got a status code of 404, yet I'm getting a rendered page. Why is that? What's happening here? So with fetch, we always get a response. We're always getting a response, even if the response is not good. So I can show you that by let's just doing a console.log of the response. So we can see what we're getting. And if we have a look now in our console, and we'll just see down here, you can see I'm getting a response uh, from the mountains Debbie with an okay or false. Uh, but I'm getting a body, as you can see, I'm getting a body uh, with no mountain inside. I'm getting an okay false, status 404, there's nothing in my status text, that's not very helpful. So it's giving me the response, but that response is not very good. So we can use this to say like, um, if the okay is is false, then don't don't try and render that data, that page. So let's see how we do that. So I can basically just do an if, let me just, Remove that for a second. We'll just delete that to make it a bit nicer. There we go. So if the response is okay, then I want you to return the JSON. If it's not okay, don't try and return it because there's nothing there and it's not gonna look very good, right? So now if we go back, now you can see that that disappeared, right? So um, we basically don't have that showing anymore, which is at least something. Okay, that's that's one one way of fixing it. Um, what else can we do? So we can actually throw the new error and then pass in. Let's just pass in the response.status because we we had the status of 404. 
So now um, if I go back, let me just go back to the home page and let's just refresh. So now if I go back and click on fetch. Yay, now I'm getting a 404 page, right? So then my Nux page, 404, an error occurred while rendering the page, check the developer tools for call, for details. So, okay, it's, it's kind of good, but it's not great. Uh, the user is not gonna make much use out of that. So let's make it a bit user friendly. So what we can do is we can use, um, actually I'll show you. I've already complete, com uh, created a error alert component. So I'm basically saying if there's an error, show the error message with this error alert component and else mountain and mountains. Okay, so that's basically pretty simple. And how do I get my error? I've got my data and I've got an error being empty. So I need that error now to be filled with something, with an error, with an error message and an error status, etc. So in order to do that, I can use try catch. So let's just take this and do a try. And now I can do a catch and I want to catch the error. And then I want to return the error. And I'm going to do exactly the same over here. So I've got exactly the same, that error component, div if error, um, error alert message, error dot message. I'm returning the data of that error, which is empty. And now you would think maybe this is going to go here, but it's not. So this is going to give me the error that I'm able to then pass into my catch block. So let's just do a try. So try and get that response. If the response is okay, give me the response. Uh, if not, show the error.status and then catch that error if there's an error, showing the error. And now I can return that error so that I can then use it in my template above and show that error alert message. Let's have a look. So let's just go back home, let's refresh. Now I'm clicking on Axios and yes, I get my beautiful component that I created. Looks like we have a problem, error. And this is the error message I was getting direct from the um, error request failed with a status code 404. And if I go back in here and go to fetch, I'm getting, yes, I'm getting the same thing. Um, just my error message is not very useful. It's just got 404 because that's the status. Um, and I could, I could change that a little bit by saying, instead of saying response.status, I could put in, there was an error fetching the data, for example. So now if I check here, uh, I've got that nicer message. So that's pretty cool. And uh, they're both working exactly the same. So just to sum up, uh, the main differences here uh, between Axios and Fetch with Axios, I need to import it. With fetch, I don't. Uh, with fetch, I need to return the response.json. I also need to throw a new error so that I can uh, catch the error. And also, I need to check if the response is okay and then return the JSON, because if not, it's always going to give me a response. Um, and with Axios, um, it just try catch and it just works. So yeah, there are the main differences between um, Axios and using fetch. I hope that helps you uh, make better decisions when choosing which one to use. Have fun. Bye.